Are you an old school player who's become burnt out over the last few weeks but are unable to pry yourself free from this game for longer than a couple months and now you're looking for something fresh but familiar? I mean, I guess. Have you been eyeing the RuneScape 3 Iron Man life from across the bar? Eh, not really, no. Well, I'll tell you, they've been eyeing you too. What? But you're scared, you're nervous. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. I understand. RuneScape 3 is so familiar and yet Whoa, hey. so different. There's so much to do, but where would you even start? I want to help you. But don't think of me as a tour guide. I'm not going to tell you all the details. I th think of me like a hotel concierge. I'm just going to tell you about some of the stuff you might want to know about sooner rather than later. How you go about using this information is up to you. I'm not going to tell you what's optimal or most efficient. I think the best experience in a new game is one of exploration and discovery. But it's hard to discover anything if you don't have any idea what you're looking for in the first place. So here's a few things you might want to know about. Whether you're an old school player looking to branch out or just a mainscaper with a superiority complex that is constantly diminished by the sheer existence of Treasure Hunter, this video will help you out during your first few weeks as an Iron Man. Quests. Super important. I'm sure that's no surprise. But in old school, there are some quests that you really don't ever need to do unless you want the quest cape. Clock Tower, for instance. Kinda pointless. But in RuneScape 3, every quest builds up to a reward. Let me explain. South of Arok, there's May's quest caravan. Not only does she have creepy as hell eyes, they're like a Halloween decoration, she also gives out rewards based on how many quest points you have. There's this talent tree-esque system, I guess you could call it that. Every 25 quest points, you can unlock one of these perks. There's caravan upgrades that aren't super exciting, but there's also this cute little dog you can get as a pet who can increase the range of your area loot, among other things, and there's a set of armor you can get. The armor of trials, which can help you with quest fights. You also get a level 75 weapon that can be used for any of the three combat styles, although it takes a bit of time to get to the point where you can unlock all this stuff, so you gotta do a lot of quests. But there is more. Those perks aren't the main course. Every 25 quest points, you get a magical die. These dice will always contain GP and a random unique from a clue scroll. As you get more quest points, the tier of the dice increases. And these clue items can be anything, even super ultra rare stuff. So don't be afraid to quest just for the sake of questing. Every quest builds up to the next die to roll. Oh, also, if you get a clue unique that's suspiciously valuable and you aren't sure why, it's an invention thing. Don't worry about it right now, just Hold on to the item for the time being, it'll come in handy later. You might want to get 50 runecrafting. Don't panic, just breathe. I know, runecrafting is a messy thing in old school. Guardians of the Rift looks interesting, but I'm willing to bet it's still most everyone's lowest skill. Tears of runecrafting, am I right? Runecrafting is much more bearable in RuneScape 3, even at early levels. I won't go into detail about how to train it because there's plenty of guides all over YouTube of varying quality. I mean, Christ, some of them are just glorified PowerPoints. Uh, never mind. I shouldn't mock glass stones, rock houses. Anyway, 50 runecrafting is required to enter the runecrafting guild. You can even get a thing called a Wicked Hood from this guy in Berthorpe, and it has a teleport on it that'll take you right to the top of the Wizard's Tower, just outside the runecrafting guild. There's really only one thing of critical importance inside the guild. The Rune Goldberg Machine. Once a day, you can come here and feed it some runes and it'll give you Vizwax. The best runes to use change every day, and only the first two are common across everyone. The third is unique to the player, but perfection doesn't matter right now. You want a healthy stockpile of Vizwax in your bank. The wax has several uses, but for you right now, the most important uses are extending daily challenges and using quick teleports. Daily challenges are challenges you get daily. Simple things like cut 10 logs or kill 15 enemies or whatever. When you complete them, you get an XP reward. If you extend the challenge, you get double that XP for double the work. This costs 25 Vizwax, great for Herblore challenges. You can also use one Vizwax for 10 quick teleport charges. This allows you to use the Lodestone Net work without having to sit down and wait to teleport. You go like a normal spellbook teleport. And you may think you'd burn through those charges really fast, but a single day's worth of Vizwax will feel like it lasts forever. 100 Vizwax is a thousand teleports. Trust me, it's fine to use those teleports very liberally. Where you guys have Fossil Island, we have an island that is a fossil. You see, we have this Dragonkin Carapac and he stole an Elder Artifact that controls time. He used it to pull an ancient version of the Dragonkin's first home on Galenor from the past into the future. 
and thus Anachronia was born, the land out of time. I, it's, it's a little lore. And on Anachronia, we have a base camp. And in that base camp, we have upgradable buildings, but there's a catch. To upgrade the buildings, you need resources. These resources are collected by your very own workers, and you can assign each one to collect one of six different resources. You start off with 10 workers, but as you upgrade the camp, this number increases to 60. Trouble is, resource collection is time-gated. It's kind of annoying, but that's why you should get started on this as soon as possible. You basically want to get your sleeping quarters to tier 3 as soon as possible, so you have the most workers to collect resources when you decide to upgrade all the other buildings. But to get the tier 3 sleeping quarters, you need a tier 3 storehouse, which requires a tier 3 town hall. And you can't skip tiers, so you need tier 2 of all those buildings first, and before that, tier 1. You see how this could take a long time. Each worker only gathers 60 resources per hour, and you only start with 10 workers. It can take a while to fully upgrade everything, but it's worth having, so you might as well get started now. Also, the resource gathering happens while you're logged out as well. It's just like a passive background thing, so just, just get it rolling. During the Elder God Wars, the Duel Arena was destroyed, being replaced by a lovely oasis with several training methods such as scarab hunting, flower picking, and rock jumpery. What's really interesting is this little thing right here, a water filtration system. With 20 construction, you can bring 5 bronze bars, 2 silver bars, 6 buckets of sand, and 1 big fishing net to this spot right here, and build a water filtration system. Once every 6 to 30 hours, which is that's quite the range, this thing will spawn an item filtered out of the oasis. Usually it's a piece of granite or sandstone, maybe a sapphire or something, but sometimes you'll get lucky and there'll be an Elder Trove. What's an Elder Trove, you ask? It's basically a mystery box that can contain a whole bunch of useful items. You primarily get them from Elder God Wars content, but they're here too. What's really exciting is you can not only get an onyx from these troves, but you can get them from the filtration system itself. There's no reason not to build it and check in on it once a week or so. It can hold up to 20 items, so you can forget about it for like 20 weeks without missing out on any loot. I usually check it every day, but that's because I come to Het's Oasis to... All right, this is a bit more late to mid game stuff, but I'll give you a bit of a taste. <gasps> Once you unlock the rapid growth spell and the ancient spell, but you can come here daily and use the spell on each of the four flower plants around Heads Oasis twice, each giving you a chance to get golden roses, which you need to spawn dazzling whirling gigs that you can catch and get their shells and crush to make penance powder, which gives you a 30 minute buff that restores 2.5% of the damage you take as prayer. <sighs> wow, that's convoluted, but that's RuneScape 3, baby. You unlock fairy rings in RS3 the same way you do in old school, except in RS3 you need the levels to complete Fairy Tale 2 before you can even start it. RS3 also has Fairy Tale 3, which gives you the ability to use fairy rings without a Draymond or Lunar Staff, certainly easier than old school. But what fairy ring is the go-to ring in RS3? In old school, for early game Iron Men, it'd be the ring east of the Kandoran Monastery right near the Tower of Life. In RuneScape 3 you have several options actually. This one is my favorite, not because it's the best, but because you can access it so early in the game. It is remarkably convenient. It's the same one that old school quest cape havers use, right outside the Legends Guild. What makes it so good? Well, you see. In RuneScape 3, the Legends Cape has a teleport on it. You teleport either to the inside of the Legends Guild or right outside the gates. You may think it's a long haul to complete Legends Quest. And you're kind of right. It's certainly not something you'd be doing as soon as you enter Galenor. No, that you'd do that probably be Waterfall Quest. Yeah, that's still worthwhile to do in RuneScape 3. But it's not something you want to put off, specifically because of the cape's teleport. This was actually what motivated me to make this video. You wouldn't know this cape had a teleport until you got the cape. And if you aren't interested in the other Legends quest rewards, then why would you bother rushing to do it? But now you know. Also, the cape's pretty good anyway. It gives offensive bonuses for all combat styles, gives a little bit of armor, and you can buy it for a song. The teleport is just gravy. Shops work a bit differently in RuneScape 3 than they do in Old School. Over here, every shop is personalized, meaning the shop stock is unique to you and only you. Because a shop stock is tied to the player, every world has the same stock. If you buy out the stock on World 1, then the stock on World 2 will also be bought out. The stock does replenish over time, but it's slow. At Daily Reset, however, the shops return to full stock and you can buy the stuff all over again. You'll commonly hear people talk about rune shop runs. Since you can't buy tens of thousands of runes from a single shop via rune packs, you need to go on a tour around Gelenor grabbing runes from everyone that sells them. It can actually be quite profitable for mains. But that's not what I think you should focus on. Instead, I think you should visit your local Slayer Master and buy their stock of insulated boots and their packs of enchanted gems. It may seem weird, but those will come in handy later when you unlock Invention. I recommend this mostly because it's really cheap and you can get to Slayer Masters very easily. There are two Slayer Master shops, one run by Turiel and Berthorpe, 
and the other run by all the other masters. They all share one shop for some reason, except for Turio. I don't know why, but I recommend when you're in their neighborhood, swing by the Slayer Master and buy boots and gems and just hold on to them in your bank. To briefly explain, Invention is all about disassembling items to collect various components that can be used to create different kinds of technology, including augmenting your armor with special perks. The boots give some useful components, and the enchanted gems can be made into Slayer rings, which also give valuable components. Since they're cheap to buy, you might as well grab them. Another shop worth mentioning is Jadex's shop in Southern Taverly. The Taverly teleport in your spellbook, not the lodestone, drops you right near him. He carries herb lore supplies, and because they're so cheap, you might as well pop in and buy them. You might think the limpworts, white berries, and vials of water are the most important things, but you'd be wrong. You definitely should buy those, but what's more important are the bomb vials. You see, herb lore goes to level 120 now, terrifying I know, and several of the new products you can create use these bomb vials, so you'll need a lot of them later on in your account. The problem is that there's only two ways of getting them. Buy them from the Herblore shops, of which there are only two and one's in Perthinus, or blow glass and make them yourself. Let me be the first one to tell you, glass blowing ain't the Iron Man craft meta like it is in old school. You don't want to waste time blowing glass just to train Herblore, so buy these bomb vials every now and then. Many cape-based teleports have been added directly to your spellbook, except the Legends cape for some reason. You know how in old school the Arty Cloak 1 can teleport you to the Kandoran Monastery? Well the same is true in RuneScape 3, but you don't need to have the cape with you to use the teleport, it just gets added to your spellbook. The bone stack you get from the Fur and Seek quest gives you unlimited teleports to the odd old man west of Paterdomus and that's placed right in your spellbook. The same is true for the Ardoin farm teleport when you complete the Elite task set. Very convenient. There's a lot I've left out of this video, and there's definitely a lot I haven't even considered. That's where all y'all come in. Was that convincing? Did that come out of my mouth right, all y'all? My fellow IR3 players, what advice do you have? What little bit of content do you think is easily missed? Let's help out our new friends and make their stay enjoyable. I'll leave you with this final note. Don't worry about doing everything correctly. Sometimes it's fun to flail about in ignorance. And if you're interested in watching somebody flail about in ignorance while doing PVM, come check me out on Twitch. I can't promise I'm the best at PVM, but I can certainly promise that I am a RuneScape player of all time. Thanks for watching.